48 hours it's been since Donald Trump won a historic election. The world has been able to digest the outcome, the implications of it. But what really happens on some big picture issues for India? Will this pave the way for UNSCC to come to India sooner than later? What does the bonhomie between Donald Trump and Prime Minister Modi translate into? To talk on all that, I have with me a very special guest, uh, Global CEO of APCO, Mr. Brad Staples, speaking exclusively to NDTV. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out the time. It's great to see you, Gore. First things first, even at the time when Donald Trump made his victory speech, one heard a lot of Modi Modi chants, and he was very positive about it. He said he's a great man. The question I want to ask and start this conversation is with where do you see that bonhomie really translating into it? Do you see that possibly uh, Donald Trump saying that it's time for India to be at the UNSC and make that stronger pitch, given that his friend is, is heading the world's largest democracy? I, I think Donald Trump being back in the White House gives more room to maneuver for Prime Minister Modi. I think it gives him some space to continue with his program in the way that he would like to. And I think there is a, 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 a political alignment and a, a mutual respect that the, 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 the two leaders share. Um, whether or not this is going to translate into um, the space and the scope that India might want on all fronts, I'm not so sure. We know that from an economic point of view uh, that um, the United States is going to look very closely at these global trading relationships and will use um, tariffs as a tool of diplomacy, not just for it as it affects India, but affects all its, its global trading partners and yes. friends. Yes. So those tariffs may you know, be somewhere between um, 10 or, or 10 to 20 percent, and in the case of China, it may be as much as 60 yeah. percent. So there'll be a transactional nature to that arrangement. But I think on a political stage and on a global diplomatic stage, uh, there's going to be more alignment and more scope for India to demonstrate uh, that it has a rightful place at, 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 in the UN context, that it has a, an important role to play potentially in securing a peace in the Middle East, yeah. trusted by Israel, trusted by the United States, and also being uh, a close partner of uh, Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Mm -hmm. So in those areas, I think we're going to find a, a different kind of relationship. And at its core, it comes from that close relationship between these two leaders. So the trade-off would be that, or I'm, I'm asking, the trade-off could be the, uh, um, a, a messy or maybe a tougher negotiation on trade and maybe on the geopolitical alignment, closer geopolitical alignment, giving more space to New Delhi to play a larger role in some of these contexts. I think there's more space for, for, for Delhi to have that role as you just described it. There is one place where India plays a pivotal role. That's helping Donald Trump to secure the outcomes that he wants and needs as it relates to China. And it, with a tougher trading relationship with China, India is crucial to securing future supply and, 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 uh, of, of, uh, of, of manufactured goods, of, of building, of become, of becoming a really deep trading partner to uh, the United States for future, for future generations. Um, so I think in that sense, with everything from technology, whether it's s semiconductors to, to you know, m mobile devices or to other areas, India represents a crucial part of the puzzle in securing the trading relationship uh, that, um, that Donald Trump wants for the future, particularly as it relates to China. You mentioned trade aspect. Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, if he has a harsher position on China, it will translate into something uh, more beneficial right. for India. But the sense in Delhi is that you know there's going to be 20% tariffs. Maybe some sectors uh, uh, like brick and mortar, steel, and others could could face even higher uh, duties from America. How does that balance out uh, for India and American uh, business interests, which you think? could converge when it comes to China. Yeah, I think there's the convergence when it comes to China. Um, raw materials, um, s some of those um, areas like steel and aluminium uh, may well face um, those kinds of tariffs that we're talking about. But India's trading relationship with the United States is evolving very quickly. It's becoming a services-driven relationship and a higher value relationship. And imposing tariffs in that context becomes m more complex. 
So I think the future as India's, uh, India's trading relationship with the United States evolves in that context. Some of these issues are going to create short-term headaches and concerns, but for the longer term, I think the, the trading relationship will become more strategic, it'll become deeper, and it'll become a trusted relationship between these two countries. What about, what about agreements like the FTA and all? You know, there have been a lot of negotiations. Even during uh, uh, Donald Trump's earlier administration, there were some very sticky and thorny issues which delayed progress, and that continues till now. Do you think maybe FTA on both sides now looks that much farther than what it was till now? I think it's a long way away. I think free trade agreements are going to be given rarely and at a high price by the Trump administration in the future, whether that's with India or, or, or other parts of the world. Um, the way that Donald Trump looks at um, trade surf surpluses and deficits um, shapes his political engagement with the world at large and his whole approach to global diplomacy. So I think we have a, a, a leader coming into the White House who looks at these issues in, in some ways in a very binary way, um, but it's quite unlike other leaders of the past. And, and then, you know, what is it that India should look forward to and what is it that it should brace itself for, both in terms of trade and in terms of some of the other security and strategic aspects of this relationship? I think um, we've talked about some of the areas where India should be optimistic and positive because there is a shared mutual interest when it comes to global trade and China's relationship with the United States cooling at the pace that it is creates a very significant opportunity for India as, as we've spoken about. And I think the, 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 this administration, the Rindra Modi's administration now, is embracing US investment and creating an, an accommodating environment that we've not seen before. And I think there's a real, real enthusiasm amongst U.S. corporate leaders to invest in India. So I think in that sense, we're in a period of real optimism and, um, and can look forward um, with excitement. We will still face some headwinds in areas as a function, uh, 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 su such as the visas, um, the L1 visas, uh, and, and, and similar visa categories for professional, professional people coming from India they're going to become incredibly difficult to reach because of the focus on immigration, which has been central to the campaign yeah. uh, and, and will remain at the heart of uh, the two or three critical issues that will shape this administration. Immigration impacts India both on the legal side as well as on the illegal side as well. Uh, there is a fair number of Indians who also come from India um, to try and reach here and, and get asylum and so on and so forth. Do you expect tough legislation to actually go through or do you think that was election rhetoric and may not actually translate into uh, laws and legal uh, legislation happening? I think we're going to see tough measures when it comes to immigration. We're going to see money diverted from social security to border security. Okay. I think we're going to see a um, systems and structures in place to deal with illegal migrants that will be... Uh, an extension of what we saw in the first Trump administration. Okay. So harsh in comparison to how the Biden administration has treated uh, illegal immigrants in, 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 in this country. What that leads to from a legislative point of view, I think we'll have to wait and see. But this is so central to those campaign promises yeah. that, that it will be a defining feature of this administration. Some statistics seem to suggest that deporting those uh, 10 million people who came in the last four years could be about $88 billion, maybe even more. Those are just back of the envelope calculations. Will the American taxpayer take up this much of uh, an expense, even if, even if he's given a very popular mandate to the president-elect? President yeah, I think there's, there's two ways to deal with deportations, and we've seen it in other countries in Europe and other parts of the world. There's symbolism and the substance. Yeah. A symbolic uh, effort made to, de Sunak, yes. to deal with those issues. We see it with Rishi Sunak. You see it with um, Georgia Maloney in Italy yeah. as well. Yeah. So having those symbolic steps taken and demonstrating to the electorate that action is underway, I think that's highly likely. Yeah. Substantively, the scale of that probably won't meet what's been talked about for the economic uh, you know, reasons you just mentioned. Indeed, uh, which that you know brings me to the other key aspect of this uh, relationship, which is around 
the Russia aspect, the China aspect, mm -hmm. and of course the Quad relationship. Mm -hmm. First, I want to talk about the Quad relationship. The if if Donald Trump takes a harsher view, stronger view against China, he would want Quad to become that much more meaningful in terms of taking on the China challenge. Do you think that uh, Quad could now, in its uh, next avatar, uh, could be a larger mechanism to take on China? And would New Delhi be part of it? I think in the Trump administration, Narendra Modi's leadership in Quad will be embraced and encouraged. Um, there was some caution and reticence about India's place in this global security matrix that's been uh, developed, I think, under the Biden administration. Uh, because of a continued proximity to Russia from an economic point of view and a strategic point of view, um, I don't think we'll see as much uncertainty uh, with this administration. I think there will be a desire and an interest to see India play a pivotal security and defense role in the region alongside the Quad partners. I think the, the defense relationship between the United States and India is going to become much closer. There's already um, progress being made from an Indian point of view to, to reorient supplies of key technology and, uh, uh, and, and, and defense infrastructure from Russia and other suppliers of the past towards the United States. And I think the Trump administration will encourage that. They'll want to see that deepening of that commercial defense relationship. And that will sit alongside a real encouragement, I think, for Narendra Modi to play a, uh, an important role alongside Quad, quad partners. Um, the rhetoric when it comes to China and defense in, in, in the region is probably going to continue to increase. But Donald Trump is not a president who looks for conflict. Yeah. He's one who looks for measures to avoid yeah. international engagements and the commitment of U.S. troops overseas. Yes. Uh on Quad, I, I just want to ask that uh, if he would want, if, if a Trump 2.0 would want uh, stronger uh, position of India within the Quad to take on China, this comes at a time when rapprochement has happened between New Delhi and Beijing. Uh, trust continues to be an issue, but there's been disengagement, there's been, you know, a de-escalation. So would it make sense for New Delhi? Of course, you know, Washington would want uh, India to play a larger role in Quad. But four years after there's been, you know, this, this uh, major Galwan conflict leading to a very uh, cold relationship, yeah. now that there's a thaw, would New Delhi be willing to do that at, at, at this time right now? I think we have to remember that global politics are going to enter a new paradigm. There'll be a new context in which large nations engage with each other. Um, there'll be more assertiveness from all sides. Yes. That's going to be the framework in which nations engage with one another. I, I think, therefore, we'll see China be a little more assertive. We'll see the US certainly be more assertive. And there'll be room for New Delhi to be more assertive in its relationship in China with China without upsetting the progress that's been made before. I think that hardening and that harshening of global relationships is almost in an inevitability as a function of uh, the new president. Final question, sir, which is that in this term, Donald Trump is also going to work for legacy. He's, he's, he's very clear that, you know, uh, there are some things he would do because he has to come good on his promises, election promises. Some would be for his legacy. What do you think that would be? I think Donald Trump is looking to r redefine the political culture, the economic context, and society in America. And, and I think he's well on the way to doing that in certain areas. Um, it's, it's quite likely that he'll look to redefine the nature of, of government in Washington. Mm -hmm. Who is appointed to those senior positions, their loyalty and their commitment to an agenda set in the White House. That may well be a central theme as well and part of, of his legacy. I think there's every expectation that the United States at the end of this next four-year term, from in terms of how the country operates and how government operates, could look somewhat different to the way it does now.
All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, sir, you so much, for sir. speaking to NDTV. That was Mr. Brad Staples uh, saying that, uh, well, Donald Trump is indeed working for legacy and looking to reshape America politically, economically, and socially. How it turns out, we'll know in about four years from now. Thank you so much for watching this very special conversation.